These days, I, I really can't keep up with all the madness in the world and the stories coming out almost every day about silly climate claims. And, of course, um, a, a, a great uh, exporter of alarmism is the British UK, the UK Met Office. And they are terrible. They really are. And they've just come out with another first of May, the hottest first of May on record nonsense. OK, so let me just tell you this. The record they've got is based in Kew Gardens, which is in an urban heat island. So, first of all, you've got to allow for that. The second thing is there was not enough wind to ventilate the box. So the Stevenson screen box, it's called a Stevenson screen, has vents in it to allow all the air to pass through of many directions. But there must be one metre a second passing through to give a proper reading. Below that, it's just like putting a thermometer in a cardboard box, which will gradually heat up with the sun's rays. So it overreads. And the third factor, if you're going to compare with history uh, temperatures, is you've got to look at the type of instrumentation used. Now, uh, the electronic instruments that measure temperature do, it, do so almost instantaneously. So whereas a, th a mercury thermometer would dampen it, so you get higher peaks from a modern electronic one compared to a mercury one for example. So you've got to allow for those three factors. So I've simply produced a paper in a very short time based on those three factors, how much it, the temperature in Kew God should be adjusted to make it the more like what actually happened. And on top of that, they compare it to a record in 1990 from Scotland. And guess where in Scotland? Here. Yes, an airport, an RAF base actually at Lossiemouth. Now, it shouldn't go unnoticed that lots of the claims that Heathrow temperature record recently, uh, the next one was Conigby to Heathrow, that's an airport. Heathrow, of course, was an airport. The next one after that was an airport and so on. You'll often get records from Valley and Anglesey or you'll get them from another airport. In this case, the 1990 record was way up, way up in Scotland, you know, uh, uh, and actually w w was at this, this place, you know, I've just shown you. And so... The reason is they're at airports because airport temperatures, when they're measured, are much higher than the real natural temperatures around, as it were. And it's called the urban heat island effect, and it's extreme at airports. And so, the, but the Met Office are great at alarmism because instead of just doing the job which is needed for the weather, and they can give us weather maybe four or five days ahead, you know, at best really, uh, and they should do that. They should do that, but no, no. They have to keep all the funding going, keep all the wheels spinning. So they grab this, they grab this climate change thing and are just peddling it as much as they can. And frankly, they should be stopped. And the money funding should be stopped. They should just concentrate on what they're there for originally, weather. Now, here is my paper here. And here is its conclusion. But I'll read that out now, but you can see the read the paper in my substack link below. Conclusion. The recorded peak temperature of 29.3 C at Kew Gardens on the 1st of May 2025, whilst valid per Met Office standards, is biased by urban heat island, poor ventilation and electronic sensor effects. An adjusted temperature of 26.8 degrees centigrade derived from the evidence-based corrections offers a more reliable value for historical comparisons. This mythology underscores the importance of adjusting urban temperature records to ensure the climatological accuracy, particularly in the context of climate change and increasing urbanization. Researchers and policymakers should consider such adjustments when evaluating temperature extremes. And there's some of the references. Well, that was Kew Gardens. One single temperature at a single moment on a single day in a single place in an urban heat island. And, uh, and this is why they picked new, uh, airports and everything, of course. Uh, I mean, it's meaningless in terms of climate. Climate is weather over a long time, a minimum, minimum of 30 years. But in actual fact, you often need 80, 100 years or more to study any part of the pattern because it's a pattern of weather climate. And so it, it really is wrong. It, it, I mean, I've had Jim Dale on GB News where I've said, you don't understand what climate is. And this is what I meant because the Met Office don't seem to understand what climate is. So I'd like to put this cute garden, single moment, single time, single day, and all this into perspective. And I'd like to go back to an, another time when we had a real heat wave. And let's say we took a heat wave that started in early July. That was 30 odd degrees and things and uh, gave regular temperatures and carried on through July, the whole of July. And then it carried on through the whole of August. 
and it even got into September, and this is UK, with over 30 degrees. Well, that would be a heat wave, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, that happened in 1911. And by the way, that's still in a single year. So even that, three months almost, even that is a, is, is a, a weather event. Yeah, but I'm just showing you how extreme it was in 1911. That's over 100 years ago when CO2 levels were next to nothing in terms of what mankind had put in. And no one, even on the alarmist side, can claim CO2 had any effect then. So so what? how come it was like that? So let's study the 1911 heat wave. So there we have the claim today, 29.3 centigrade in London. But we know it's really more like 26.8. So I'm now going to take you from 2025, past the 1990 record at that Scottish airbase and into 1911. The United Kingdom heat wave of 1911 was a particularly severe heat wave and associated drought. Records were set around the country for temperature in England, including the highest accepted temperature at the time of 36.7 centigrade. Starting early July, it lasted through July, August and into September, when even on the 8th of September in Northamptonshire, 34.6 centigrade was recorded. However, even the September temperature did not beat the record 2nd of September temperature of 35.6 centigrade in 1906, a record not beaten until this day. Wow! A high temperature record not beat on any year in the last 119 years, even until today. Wow, what a way to actually spread along. But hold on, 1906. Okay, that was not possibly caused by mankind CO2. And this is why it's quite ridiculous to use individual temperatures the way the unscrupulous Met Office do to, to, to alarm people, right? And it's clear that drought, that drought and heat wave was far worse than anything maybe 1976 would compete with it. But it went on for two and a half months. And yet the recent what so-called heat waves of uh, 1998, 2002, etc. last for a few days. So severe was this 1911 heat wave that, you know, People slept outside in parks. Over 40,000 people died of heat in Paris. And the east coast of the USA was also experiencing the same heat wave, as was actually the whole of the Northern Hemisphere. So if anything like that happened today, wow, they really would be you know, screaming, wouldn't they? But oh no, what they do is pick an individual temperature to alarm you, you know, at an airport or, or in the middle of Kew Gardens, which is surrounded by urban heat island, it's part of an urban heat island, and they do this, ignore that, you know, a, a single maximum temperature for a few seconds means nothing, absolutely nothing. This is how remarkable the world has had been distorted by um, the alarmists. There is no excuse for this at all. It is almost criminal. Now, this little table is meant to give you some perspective on it all. Now, it's based on um, the duration of the highest temperatures, you know, the average of the highest temperatures, instead of spot readings, as it were. And on that basis, the 1976 comes out top on record. And that had several weeks with 15 consecutive days above 32 degrees centigrade. But uh, 1911 would be the next one. But on duration, 1911 would come top and 70, 1976 would come second. And the next one down the list is 2003, 10 days. There's no comparison in duration and, and, and in temperature either. 2022, five to seven days. Or the 2019 heat wave comes bottom with three to five days. I mean, this is how we've distorted the entire thing. Now, in my hydroclimatology work and in my water resource planning, you know, I was looking at um, droughts and heat waves in the 1700s, which are far worse than today. And historically, extremes of all temperatures are far worse than today. But it's being distorted to provide alarmism for you. That's all. Now, if you want to go on about heat waves and associated droughts, the drought of um, 1765 to 1768 it's called the forgotten drought we've had nothing like it since it didn't just last for two or three months it basically lasted about 18 months almost two years 
and, and it affected Northern Ireland, Ireland. It had terrible consequences. But, you know, I didn't bother including that because we don't have the proper temperature readings back that far. Uh, we have maybe one, uh, the Central England temperature record. But I didn't want to go into that. So when I say that list, that list you could take it as from 1800. OK, so I hope I've explained to you in this uh, video just how stupid um, the Met Office is in trying to cause this alarm. But everyone grabs it. All the reporters grab it. You get flashes across the bottom of all the news channels, you know, record heat, and it all alarms you. You know, people have got to grow up on this. Uh, 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 and I just think this behaviour is disgusting. And what I've tried to do in this short video is is deal with it. And I hope you've enjoyed understanding and watching it. I'm sorry for the change of shirt, if anyone noticed. What happened was my wife took the light, light um, clothing for the light wash in the washing machine and I, I wasn't aware of it. And the result was... I had to change my shirt because <laughs> I tried to keep a shirt for the duration of um, of a video, but it wasn't possible this time. So probably no one noticed, but I know women notice these things, or I don't. OK, well, thank you very much for watching. Look forward to meeting you again in the next one, which isn't far away.